So let me tell you a little bit about Krispy Kreme. Uh, we at Krispy Kreme believe that we're guardians of something very special. It's a 72-year-old company, and it needs to be here for a lot more than 72 more years. And quite frankly, there are a lot of people out there that, over what, based on what's occurred the last five years, they don't think we're going to be here much longer. Uh, it is a complicated company that, that serves what appears to be a very uncomplicated product. Uh, it, is found, it is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It is local. Uh, we are in uh, 38 states. We'll be in 20 countries at the end of this year, and I was serious, China being one of our new countries. We're going into Turkey, China, and Malaysia this year. Uh, but the problem we've got right now is that some mistakes were made uh, years ago. And by the way, sometimes mistakes are obvious when you get to them, but sometimes it's the wisdom of hindsight that tells you when they've been made. So I'm going to speak with the wisdom of hindsight and try not to be judgmental about any of the decision makers at that point in time. But with the wisdom of hindsight, some poor decisions were made. And the people who are paying the price for that right now are not the people that had anything to do with those decisions. Uh, the employees of Krispy Kreme have been beaten down, berated uh, in the press and otherwise for five years now. Uh, I'll give you an example of what can hit you all at once. All at one time, Krispy Kreme was facing shareholders, lawsuit, a derivative lawsuit, an ERISA lawsuit, an SEC investigation, and a Department of Justice investigation. Pretty hard to come to work every day, excited about what you're doing and what you're responsible for when you've got that hanging over you and when papers, both local and national, are, are telling the world you're not going to be around. So my job, I think, at Krispy Kreme initially was to tell those people we are going to be around and tell them we're going to be around because of them. And what we've tried to do there, I'm not sure that we have the most unique business plan in the world. We have seven strategic objectives we're driving toward. But what we do have is 3,800 employees that now believe that our future is brighter than ever. I believe strongly that that company, Krispy Kreme, will be stronger because they had their head handed to them than they ever could have been if they had never had that happen before. I happen to have that personal philosophy. I'm not sure you will ever be as good at what you're trying to do in life if you haven't been humbled pretty severely at least once or twice. I think you learn to understand what you can't control and you also learn to understand what's truly important. So I personally think Krispy Kreme has a great, great future. We are opening our first new company store next Tuesday that we've opened in six years. Uh, we are, the, the employees are seeing that. They see the growth. Uh, I have difficult days there. Please don't read me wrong. They have nothing to do with the internal. We were on a list about three weeks ago, a list of 15 companies that aren't going to make it. What a great way to wake up one day to find out that somebody's put you on a list of 15 companies that aren't going to make it when you're sitting there, a part of an employee base that are all telling each other, we've got some great things going. We have really made progress. The initiatives are getting traction. Uh, that piece had no research. It had no facts. It was just easy to put out. It was 15 household names that aren't going to make it. And you can imagine the disruption it created in our corporate life. Uh, they said that the reason was that we had heavy debt. We were laden with debt. Make sure you understand what laden with debt meant. They didn't have any numbers. Krispy Kreme has about 70 something million dollars in debt, which is not much for a corporate entity even their size. We happen to have $35 million approximately of cash in the bank. We're not laden with debt. And I can almost assure you, if you meet me next a year from now, I'll still be with Krispy Kreme and <clears throat> Krispy Kreme will still be here, but we have a tough road. A turnaround is not easy, but the great thing is being a part of a turnaround is just one of the most exciting things you could ever experience in life. Kay Norwood and others and I were, did that at IJL, and it was great fun. So the, the biggest thing I can tell you about Krispy Kreme is we're, we are not in the business of selling more donuts. Here's where, who we are. Krispy Kreme is 3,800 people, and here's what they're committed to. We are deeply committed to taking the product we know as Krispy Kreme that has an aura way beyond what its size justifies. And through that product, we want to touch and change lives. That's our mission. If we do that, if every time someone walks in one of our stores, if every time we see each other, if we're touching and changing lives, we will sell all the donuts that we need to sell. So our mission is to use the vehicle, this magic product called Krispy Kreme, to make a difference in this world where we live. And I'm telling you, we're going to do it.
So if, in, the, in the question and, and answer, if you want some more questions on Krispy Kreme, you know, I'll be, I'll be able to answer some, not all because of being a public company. But I just want you to know that's my summary of Krispy Kreme. So here, I'm going to read something to you. If you want to know what Krispy Kreme is, here's what Krispy Kreme is. So for about a year, 10 months, I've been urging the employee base to understand what our mission is, that that's what's going to make us succeed, that we've got to think of others and think of this world around us. Uh, I'm going to read you a quick couple of paragraphs from a blog uh, on one of the uh, websites, one of the uh, care page, I think it's called, site, where people go on and they, they blog with their friends and loved ones about someone who is ill or is troubled in their family or maybe even someone they've lost. It's a beautiful website, by the way. But this was posted February 28th by a wonderful lady named Jennifer. I have to share with you all a wonderful testament of the kindness to strangers. Benjamin and I witnessed on his heart birthday. Thursday, as I mentioned in my post, I had ordered Krispy Kreme donuts for Benjamin to take to school Thursday. I had called and hoped I could get the heart-shaped ones, but the lady on the phone explained that you have to order 10 dozen to get special shaped ones. This was after Valentine's. B, meaning Benjamin, only has 10 kids in his class, so that wasn't an option. I could tell the woman on the phone, I asked, and she said her name was Virginia, seemed to think I was a bit of a nut trying to order heart-shaped donuts two weeks after Valentine's Day. So I very briefly mentioned that I had wanted the heart shape because my son was having his sixth heart transplant anniversary and needed a special snack for his preschool class. She then suggested she could do a round one and stamp a heart on it somehow. That sounded great to me. So I asked if I could use the drive through to pick up the donuts the next day, and then I hung up. The next morning, I got a call from Virginia at Krispy Kreme letting me know my order was ready. I thought this a little odd. And could I come inside to pick them up? That was fine with me. I was just happy to have donuts with a heart like Benjamin wanted. When we got there, we walked in, and Virginia said, you must be Jennifer. I just smiled, said yes, caught a little off guard. She then said she'd been expecting us and had something special for Benjamin. There on the counter was a huge balloon bouquet, a card she had picked up from Hallmark, and it signed by all the staff at Krispy Kreme that had a puppy on it that said, so happy for you, congratulations. A Krispy Kreme hat, which Benjamin wore all day at school, and two and a half dozen heart-shaped donuts with red icing. Benjamin was so excited to see the balloons and donuts. I was so touched I was speechless and then had the sense to remember I had my camera in my purse and took pictures and kept thanking them over and over. I have not been moved by such a random act of kindness, as my friend Jane Allison calls it, in a long, long time. This lady knew nothing about us, only that I said he was celebrating his heart transplant anniversary and yet went to so much trouble to make his day so special. And on top of everything else, she would not let us pay for them. She said she just wanted him to have a special day. Wow. I've shared her kindness with as many friends as I can the last day or so, and with you, because I would love for, I like this part, I would love for all of our local friends to support the Mallory Lane Krispy Kreme. They, they rock. <laughs> she goes forward, and her last paragraph is this. As my friend Lisa A., who is a recent cancer survivor, says, often in her post, it's all about paying it forward, isn't it? I cannot help but think God has his angels down here, and Virginia at Krispy Kreme surely is one, of, one to us. She made Benjamin's day much more special simply by taking the time to do something nice for a stranger. I'm going to do my best to pay it forward also. I took a lot of my time to read that one blog. But I just want you to understand, that's what Krispy Kreme is. Krispy Kreme is not bricks and mortar. It's not a company that made a lot of mistakes five, six, seven years ago. It's not a company that's not going to be here tomorrow. It's a company of incredible people. And for those of you that are in college students, you want to look for a company of incredible people. You want to look for a company that's focused on the Jennifers and the Benjamins of the world as they go through what may seem to be a routine business plan, such as selling donuts.